uh, Patricia. Okay, write an equation first. Forget about the sketch. We got to write an equation. Anywhere you want to start? Any thoughts? Just don't want a blank slate here. Just throw anything up. Right or wrong. Won't matter to me. We gotta come up with an equation that has zeros two, three, and negative six. Two, three, and negative six. Those, so those are if they're saying those are the zeros, that's a, what zero is another name for. Roots. Answers. Those are the answers to these. Anything? Go ahead, talk, go ahead, throw something out there, Gabby. What do you mean? Because it's, it's an answer. Like so two, two is an answer, three is an answer, negative six is an answer. All three are answers to this. Oh, yeah. There you go. Hey, these are, hey, look, these are answers. X equals two, X equals three, X equals negative six. What must have been in the parentheses before that to get me to know this is the answers? X, what must have been the parentheses for an answer of X equals 2? X minus 2. What must have been in the parentheses to get X equals 3? X minus 3. What must have been in the parentheses to get X equals negative 6? And don't try to be a hero. That's all we need. I don't need this. Ah. No, stop. Stop showing off. You're done. You're done. That's full credit right there. That's full credit. There's your equation. Now sketch it. That should be the easiest two points we're ever going to have. How can you sketch this? Ethan? Graph it. Graph it. You graph it. You got a graphing calculator in front of you, graph it. I know you don't have a P of X, but at least you have an F of X, or you could do Y equals. Yep. Uh, try go to settings, maybe. What's up, Max? Do we still make the equation in the same way if the leading coefficient is something other than one? No, if it was something other, yes, you could. Yes, yes, you can make it the same way. You would just have to put that leading coefficient. So let's say the leading coefficient's two. Now I got to put that out there. Okay. Yep. Good question. Would you have to put it in between each one or just? No, just equation? the first. Yep, just the first one. Because if you put it in front of each one, Kate, now you're doing that two times that two times that two, and it's just, and now it's going to be an eight instead of a two. All right, so what do I put on my graph here? Put the main information, right? It goes through, it should be going through negative six, because that's a zero. It should be going through two and three, and I would also probably put where it goes on the y-axis, which is, where does it go through on the y-axis? If you guys hover over that point. 36. And again, it's a sketch. It's a sketch. So I have a point here, here, 
here, here. And now you look on your graph and calculator and it tells you which way to go. You all right there, Gabby? No. What's going on? I'm just so confused with, like, what? with the graph thing. Yeah, what is that graph there? Um. Okay, so, okay. so if you ever want to see the actual graph, you go up to auto. And your calculator will automatically show you what the graph should look, fit the graph in your screen. Okay, so make sure auto is on that. Okay, so that probably will solve a lot of issues. <coughs> All on the calculator. And this is an, a great example of why you never leave anything blank. Let's just say this is a four-point question. Four points. So I'm assuming it's going to be two points for this, two points for the graph. Let's just say you, you did something wrong up here. If you graphed the, whatever you did wrong, if you graphed whatever you wrote here correctly, you're still going to get two points. So if you graphed an inc something incorrect, if you, if you did this equation incorrectly but gr had the graph correct, you're still going to get two points. That's why you never leave anything blank. All right, they're not going to take off all four points. Whatever you have written here, if it's graphed correctly there, you're going to get two points. Don't leave anything blank. Any questions here? Good job, Harper. Way to get it started. Anything else? All right, here we go. Good old probability time, 34. I think you guys should be able to get the first part. I just got to remind you how to do part B for the second part. So let's look at this first part of two. <coughs> So find the probability a selected donor is categorized as a supporter given the donation was made online. So we're not looking at the whole table, are we? What do we already know? What's already given? Bless you. Already given. Supporter online. So here's where we are living right there, right? That's where we're living, not the whole table. We already know they're an online supporter. So how many of them are there? 3,216, and out of those 3,216, what's the, how many are a supporter? How many are a supporter out of those? 1,200. Now, I can't leave it like this. I can't, we're not rounding, we're not reading the directions. It says nearest thousand, so I need to go to my calculator and divide them and round. Harper. If you're putting it, you're putting it into a decimal, right? No, it says nearest thousand, so decimal. If it said nearest thousand percent, then yeah, you would do that. So all I'm doing is dividing them and then rounding that decimal. So I have three numbers after the decimal. So zero point, you don't have to have the zero, but definitely have to have the point. Three, seven, three. All right, you ready for this next part? This is what they're, this is a typical probability question. They'll ask a given question like they just did here, and then may, probably the second part, or maybe just the question overall will be, are these two independent or not? So we need to remember how to test if they're independent or not. There's, there were two tests, there were two tests. I, I prefer you just remember one. So prob is, here, here we need, is the probability of A times the probability of B the same as the probability of A, and I'm going to use our symbol. Anybody remember that symbol? And B, yep. So is this true or not? That's what you have to test. Okay, that's what we need to test. Is the left side equal to the right side? So go back up to the question. What are the two things we're testing are independent or not? Does the data indicate that being a supporter, so I'll call that one A, is independent of 
donating online. So I'll call that B so we can find each probability now. You don't make up these probabilities. You get it from the darn table. Okay, we don't make these up out of nowhere. So probability to A is using the table, what's the probability they're a supporter? That's it. Probability they're a supporter. That's what I want to know. What's the chances you get a supporter out of this table? Nothing's given, remember. Nothing, just what's the probability you're, it's a supporter? Oh, how many supporters are there? 1,600 supporters out of how many total people here? Because, again, I got to go through the total because nothing is given here. 1,600 supporters out of how many total people here? 4,288 times, what did we call B? You donated online. So what's the probability you donated online now? 3,216 out of still 4,288. Everyone all right where these numbers are coming from? All right, now is that equal to the probability of being a supporter and donating online? You do not make up this number. You get it from the chart. What's the probability you're a supporter and you donate online? How many of them are there in that chart? That you're a supporter and you donate online. How many of them are in there? Supporter and donate online. Both. Both happening at the same time. Supporter, how many people are a supporter and they donate online? 1,200. All right, there's 1,200 of them that are a supporter and do it online. Out of 4,288. Go to your calculator. Do those two multiplied together equal 1,200 over 4,288? And you're probably going to have to compare the decimal for both. Get it from the table. Get the numbers from the table. What'd you guys find? Are they equal, both sides, decimal-wise? Yeah. Yes, they are. So this would be yes, they are independent. And they will give you a table to find these values. I guarantee it. If they ask if they're independent or not, they'll give you a table where you calculate the probabilities. Go, Harper. Um, you, when I put it in, I got like a um, decimal. So you got you multiplied these two, yeah. got a decimal. 1,200 over, now do that and make sure the decimal matches. Okay, we're good. Anybody else? Buckle up. We're going to the big dog. Six-pointer, here we come. Stretch out, whatever you need to do. Six points, we don't leave a blank. This is right in our wheelhouse too, right in our wheelhouse. All right, write the equation of this graph in this form, A sine B, T, and C plus C. All right, let's buckle, there we go, we got this. Let's first start, how do I find the A value? Here, how do I find the A value? Dig deep for me, come on, dig deep. And it's even on your formula sheet I, that you need to remember. I'm, I don't even want you to get it out because you know it. You know it already. Max minus min over two. What is the max here? Twenty eight hundred minus the minimum. 
2,000 over 2. All right, calculate that A value. Four hundred. A is done. I'm going to skip over B because C is done just the same way, except now it's plus. Look at you guys. Eight hundred plus two thousand over two. Holy boy, oh boy, forty eight, twenty four hundred. You ready for B? How do we find the B value? It's another, it's in another formula we talked about. I don't have a formula that says B equals, but it's in a formula that we have used. Period equals 2 pi over B? Yes. Period equals 2 pi over B. Yep. Which means I'm going to need to figure out, looking at the graph, what the period is. So how long did it take to make that curve? How long, Gabby? Five, that's how long it took to make the curve on the x-axis, five units, equals two pi over b. Yep. How do you solve this? Cross multiply. Yep, go ahead, solve for b for me. The B value, 2 pi over 5. All right, put it all together. Let's answer part A. N of T equals 400 sine 2 pi over 5. A, and I did this when I did my answer. Make sure you got to put the T with it. Okay, make sure it's just not the B value. You got to put B times T and then plus 2,400. Next, it's part B. Now we have to graph one. 2,000 sine pi T plus 3,200. Put that on the same graph now. All right, before we start putting anything on the graph, let's find our uh, values that we need. So if I'm gonna do y-axis, what three values go on the y-axis? What three values go on the y-axis? Okay, let's find it. Max, min, and the midline. Using the, you guys should be able to do this, Look, just looking at the equation, find the max, the midline, and the minimum. How do you find the max? Yep, 2,000 plus 3,200, right? It was 2,000, but I shifted 3,200. Now it's going to be 5,200. So there's my max. Minimum? Negative 1,200? It was negative 2,000 plus 3,200. So it would be positive 1,200, right? And then how about your midline? 3,200. It's your shift, right? All right, so if you guys want to go back right now and graph those, just mark them on there. Just mark them where those three values are. So 1,200. I would just mark them. 1,200, 3,200. And 5,200. 
Okay, there's the y-axis. Now help me out with the x-axis because it may not be one, two, three, four, five like that. How do we figure out how do we do the, the x-axis? What do we got to find? Got to find the period. Good. So find the period. Again, Grant gave us that, 2 pi over b. What's your b value here, kids? Pi. Yep, pi. So they'll cancel and the period is, which means that's where the graph will end. Our graph will end right here at two. So I need to figure out what are the other values. So what do I do with two? Divide by four, good, Richie, good. Divide by four, so it's equal to, I get a mark every one half. I should be putting a tick mark every one half. So I'll put a tick, let's see, these go by 0.25s it looks like. So every one half. Next one's gonna be where after a half? One, and then one and a half, and then two, and then we're done, right? Because it said only graph one cycle. All right, and this is what, sine? All right, here we go, kids. Tell me something about sine, where's sine start? Midline, don't say zero, starts at the midline, which we said was 3,200. So it's going to start right here. Then it goes where? The max. To the max, yep. Make sure at 0.5 you're graphing it now. So at 0.5 it should be up near, is that right? I can't even, yep. And then where? Max, back to the midline, back to the midline at one. Then where? Yeah. Minimum. And then I end it at back at the midline, right? So there you go. Issues? And then finally, there is one more question, right? How many times are during this five second interval where the two graphs be equal? So what are you looking for? Where, how many times they intersect, but here's the pro what's the problem we're gonna run into? It's over the entire five second interval. We didn't graph, our, we didn't graph over five seconds. We just graphed over two, right? So either we have two choices right now. We keep graphing until we hit five, or you know both equations. Where can I type both equations and see how many times they're gonna intersect over five seconds? You can do it in your graphing calculator. Okay, so either one is acceptable. You keep graphing. All right, so now you go to two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five. Keep graphing, then count the number of times it intersects, or Go to your graphing calculator and graph both and see how many you count on your screen how many times they intersect. All right, just for time's sake, I'll let you know it's going to be four times. Okay, they'll intersect four times. All right, and here is the suggested problems for tomorrow. There's only four, five of them. 36 from this exam. 36. And then, um, hey, we're starting January 2023 tomorrow. And so those four problems from January 23, which you have that exam. John Carlin. I do, yes. Yep, you got it. Yep, bye-bye. Drew, down in the office, another period. We'll be seeing it. Okay, so number 36 is from this exam. One, two, four, five is from the next exam. We're gonna start the January one tomorrow.